Am I about to automate myself out of a job? Let's find out. Today, I'm letting Claude AI try to build my init and workflows. No manual work, just a single prompt and a download. Is this the end of workflow building as we know it? All right, we're gonna just copy over the workflow that, pro that it built, paste it in here. Yep, yep, I'm out of a job. So the old way of building in it in workflows is you'd spend hours mapping every trigger, every node, every data connection. It was a lot of trial and error, drawing it on whiteboards, searching docs, and debugging until it finally worked. Even if you had an example or a YouTube tutorial, you still have to translate it step by step in n 8 hoping that you didn't miss a detail. Honestly, it was powerful, but slow and not exactly beginner friendly. But Claude 4 changes everything. It's not just another AI chatbot. Opus is trained to reason through code, understand complex automations, and actually build workflows from a single prompt or even a screenshot. That means what used to take hours could now take minutes. You describe what you want, upload an example, and Claude handles the rest, wiring up the logic, building out the JSONs, and you get about 80% of the way there, ready to import directly into n 8 So let's put it to the test and see if it really lives up to the hype today, guys because I might be out of a job. By the way, guys, if you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want more free resources, you can actually click the link below to get access to my school community where there are more downloadable templates and trainings on actually how to build these edit and workflows for yourself. All right, so in Claude, we have, just like we have in ChatGPT, the ability to click projects. Now, when we start in projects, we'll see that it's basically blank except for the projects that I've already built out. So first things first, we're going to create our new project. We'll call this N8N Workflow Builder V2, because I actually already have one. And we will create the project. So now that we're in a project, you'll see that it's basically empty. It is a fresh shell available for us to connect whatever it is that we need to be able to connect. There are no projects, there are no instructions, and there are no tools connected to it. Now I'm going to add my project knowledge. So I have everything in my GitHub. And if you don't know, N8N has a ton of documentation. So I'm not going to let Claude guess as to what steps to take, I'm going to give it everything that it needs to understand, whether it's understanding a workflow, how to create it, the workflow templates that exist, everything. So So I just grabbed all of my readme files and in the school group, I will actually explain the process of setting up your GitHub and actually creating everything necessary to build this out. Now that we have our project knowledge embedded, we need a way to prompt Claude. The thing is, is I don't want to have to go figure out all the necessary nuances of it. I actually just want Claude based on the information I've actually given it to help me prompt it. So please provide a detailed framework or setup of guidelines for writing prompts that consistently produce the best possible n 8 workflow builds. Focus on how to structure the requests, specify the requirements, and include any necessary details so that the workflow generated is accurate, complete, and practical to use. Use best practices, examples of prompt structures, and common mistakes to avoid. Ideally, give it to me in an acronym form so I can teach it to my audience. Uh, this is actually something that I developed through ChatGPT as I gave it the basics and it brought it through here. So I'm actually going to try to process this through Claude Opus 4 instead of Sonnet and see what happens. All right, some sort of capacity constraints. Let's try that again, but instead with Sonnet. All right, we now have the SmartFlow framework for N8N workflow prompts. 
So we need to specify the goal. We need to map the data flow. We need authentic authentication and credentials, requirement and constraints, trigger definitions, filter and logic, logging and error handling, output format, and workflow structures. So it brings us through everything that we're going to need to actually build out our prompt, which is actually pretty rad. Even examples, common mistakes. All right, so we're going to put our prompt into ChatGPT. We're going to add the prompt framework information that we have so that it has enough knowledge as to how to accomplish the task, and we'll see what it provides for us for our prompt and markdown. Generate a prompt uh, for my workflow builder agent in Claude Opus 4. Build a workflow that automates uh, looking for viral videos using Mr. Beast methods. The goal is to look for channels based on keyword search that have low subscriber count and high views in the last 30 days. Example, if a channel is talking about AI automations, has 5,000 subs, and a video with 10K views in the last 30 days, that would be identified as a winner. Add that to our spreadsheet. I want this uh, triggered every morning at 8 a.m. Uh, and emailed to me with the final result. I also want it to transcribe the video, grab the title, YouTube uh, thumbnail, channel ID and information, as well as scrape the comments from the YouTube video. Make sure we're not using any custom nodes, only nodes that exist within N8N. If you, um, I don't know why I wrote that part. So let's hit enter. Okay, so let's take our node here. Let's go into Claude. We're going to paste it. We're going to turn this to Opus 4. All right, and just like that, we're good to go. So let's see what this did. We're going to copy this over. So a few things here that we already see that are kind of weird. One, it's pulling in custom nodes that don't connect to anything because they technically don't exist. Um, it's doing HTTP requests to get top comments, but I don't know exactly what it's leveraging. Okay, so this is right. Um, some sort of email to send error notifications, but it's not pulling Gmail. So that's something that we probably need to specify. But it did do some interesting things here when we're looking into JSON code. I mean, it's developing whole JSON codes here. So let's, let's do this. I have built something kind of similar. Uh, not exactly, but similar enough. And what I'm going to do, because it didn't work out the way I really wanted it, probably just needs a little bit more training along the way. So I'm going to copy everything from that one uh, where I grabbed trends, uh, and I'm going to paste it into here. I'm going to have it try it again. All right, so I'm going to want it to Make sure that, hey, uh, so I just basically told it, hey, that's a lot of custom. There's a lot of, that had a lot. Of, so I'm just going to tell it that had a lot of custom code that did nothing. And here's a tool that I built that does a similar function. Also, make sure you're using Google Sheets. And uh, to for, also, make sure you're using Google Sheets to upload and grab and use Gmail as well. So I'm going to copy everything in here. I'm going to hit enter and we'll let it run. All right, so it looks like we're done. We're just gonna hit copy. Paste it in there. Ah, there we go. Okay, that's impressive.
giving me a lot of information here. How it's thinking through things, how it's creating the viral score. So it looks like it's scheduling a trigger. Uh, hours between trigger, four hours between trigger. So it looks like it's going to be triggering it often. Looks like there's some sort of manual webhook that it wants to create. I'm not sure why, but hey. So it's monitoring YouTube channels, identifying content opportunities by tracking view counts greater than 100,000 in 24 hours. Probably need to uh, reduce that quite a bit. We don't want to be looking for just videos that are uh, over, over 100,000 views. Schedule scanning every four hours. Probably just want this once a day, like we said. Uh, up to 50 competitors. Uh, viral detection, multiple thresholds based on channel size. All right, so let's go through. So it looks like it's taking both of these triggers, merging them, looking for competitor channels that we have versus what it is that we started off, which was ideally just looking for Ideally, just looking for keywords. Let's see, error recovery strategy, API quotas exceeded, uh, switch to RSS feed. So this is a rate limit delay of one second after interval. So go through the interval, done. Go through the interval, wait, done. That's not really the way it would work. That's weird. <laughs> okay. Retry 3x, uh, three times within 30 second connection window, error handling. Workflow YouTube dis viral discovery. So I'm wondering if the intent I actually don't know why they would be using that. But let's let's get 8020, right? So we have channel discovery. The goal is to get statistics and content data details. Looks like it's wanting to get recent video, okay, from the playlist. Get the video details, statistics, snippet, content details. Calculate the viral metrics. So it looks like it created a function for that. Then we have a filter for detecting trending topics. And then giving us a trending topic alert. Okay, doesn't really go anywhere. Where exactly is it posting it to? All right, some weird stuff. Sent it to urgent email, which really, which should have just sent it to Gmail. I don't know what urgent email is. And then it also created a Slack alert. Oh, okay. So there must be something where this is actually going to a Slack alert, but then again, we could just create a Slack connection While I don't think I'm out of a job just yet, that's a hell of a start. The reality is, is that this is day one of what Opus 4 has been able to do. So in six months, I'm pretty sure that with enough prompting, with enough just proper engineering on their end, and then just understanding how to prompt it on our end, 
that we can make workflow automations actually much, much, much easier. The business that we're in is not about building the templates. The business that we're in is in helping businesses understand their own operational processes, sales processes, marketing processes, and figure out what technologies can get them that 80-20 lead. We don't want them to be overwhelmed with having to get into a brand new system and a brand new way of doing things. Rather, we wanna find ways to leverage the things that they're wasting time on to get the most benefit out of that, that bit of time so that they can go work harder and more efficient on other things. So this is a great start. I definitely am gonna be practicing and building more things within Claude and just giving it more information and just helping to prompt it over time. And I probably will also start with things that are a little less complex. Um, I was basically telling it to do a lot of algorithmic processes when I probably needed to just have it do some sort of straightforward linear path. So guys, this has been a great video. If you loved it, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Once again, if you want to know how to build this for yourself in my school group, I actually give away the free template with all the information and steps for you to be able to build that yourself. So this is Lloyd. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If YouTube's asking you to go watch one of my other videos here, I recommend checking it out. I believe it's going to be a lot of benefit to you guys. Have a great day. Bye.